Cheers. Cheers. Welcome, Welcome to Movie, movie Bitches. Bitches. Happy Hol- holiday. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Happy holidays. <laughs> holiday movie extravaganza part three. I'm excited for next year's The Dog That Saved Blank Holiday. I think um, it'll be The Dogs That Saved This Holiday, and it'll be all of the dogs, wow. mostly Mario Lopez, but it sounds like... Joey Lawrence uh, took over for part well. of it. I'm excited wow. for this adventure that no one asked for. And Joey Lawrence, hey, that's me, as Zeus. And you let us know. Yeah, what should we do? So, I have two more movies to talk about. Right. Both Melissa Joan Hart related. Uh, okay. I watched a movie called Dear Christmas. Great. From 2020, Hallmark. I think I watched that. With Melissa Joan Hart and Jason Priestley? No, probably not. Okay. And her parents are Faith Prince and Ed Bigley Jr. I don't know who those people are. Faith Prince is a Broadway actress, but oh, she was is. most famously, I guess, maybe to you, um, Adelaide, from the Nathan Lane Guys and Dolls. Gotcha. When I you love find him in jail, don't come to me to bail you. Oh. And Ed Bigley Jr., you know Ed Bigley Jr.? I know the name. He's I'm that, sure if I saw... He's that I'd guy. Like, oh, yeah, that guy. Anyway, um, this movie was weird, strange. So, Dear Christmas. Just Dear Christmas. Uh, Melissa Joan Hart, in a role she is too old for, is... I'm sorry, it's just true. Is playing a podcaster who... Her podcast is called Holiday Love. It's the perfect backdrop to fall in love. But is it love or is it the season? Oh. Where she gives advice for holidays? Holiday love is very complicated at Christmas. You can't just crack it that easily. About love. What what does she do the rest of the year? Well, you know, love on Arbor Day. No, stop it. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, this is, these are the facts that lay before us. I don't know. She so it's holiday love advice. Holiday love advice. But it doesn't advice. necessarily have to be the holidays. It could just be. Oh, it's just, yeah. Like, I loved Dear Thanksgiving, that story about the turkey drop. Is that real? Dear Halloween was the best for the angel and the devil fall in love. They invited me to their wedding. <gasps> I think she Memorial expanded Day. it. You know, like, oh, okay, flag day. Love right. advice. I don't know. Valentine's Day, obviously, that one makes sense. But yeah. St. Patrick's Day, love Easter, advice? Easter. Well, don't get too drunk. Sure. You know. You don't want to be a drunk mess in front of your potential love. Or you want to be able to remember, remember that you met them. What if you forget? So that was another one of those like weird, that's not a job. Right. That is sustainable throughout the year. But right. sure, whatever. Oh, you're a Christmas decorator and that's your only profession. Yes. Okay. So so she has, um, this this podcast has blown up. Oh, sure. She's so famous. Thank you, Squarespace. From this podcast about yeah. holiday love. She's going back home uh, for the holidays. Uh, and, oh, her sister okay. is pregnant. But also, she's played by Lady from Maneater. No, stop it. I just about lost my mind. The the blonde lady? Yes, who is trying so hard not to be Australian. Mom said that you might be able to take me Christmas shopping, but I don't want to interrupt you. I know you have a big podcast. So hard. A giant shark just ate a bunch of my friends, so I'd kind of like to see, see it fucking, fucking dead. dead. That one? That lady. Great. <laughs> well, it seems that shark killed all of my friends. So if you don't mind, sir... Before I go home, I'd like to see that thing fucking dead. What are the odds? What are... I was like, oh, dear God, that is the same actress. And she is just as Australian as she was. Oh, no, but she's trying her darndest. She's not a... She's not Australian. No, no, no. no. So she's driving home for Christmas and... Her car runs out of gas or her battery died. I don't know. She needs to call AAA. Okay. Um, But uh, who shows up in the tow truck? Jason Priestley. And his name is Chris Massey. No. What? Chris Massey. Oh, Chris. Yeah. Massey. It's Chris. Chris Massey. Wow. Chris Massey. I mean. Just going to let that sink in. Wow. Yeah. Who's Jason Priestley? From 90210. Hmm. Private Eyes. Okay. The, I, I mean, I know the name. The I just... Canadian show I am obsessed with that's just moonlighting, but it's modern day P.I.s. Love, love it. Solving cases and not falling in love. Oh? What? Or are they? Well, it did get canceled. So oh. That's kind of a bummer. I guess they're not. But anyway, so Jason Priestley. Yeah. Chris Massey. Chris Massey. Wow. <coughs> God, shows up, yeah, to 
fix her car. She keeps seeing these glass heart ornaments everywhere, and okay. at some point she talks to them. What? I didn't know. It's lots of people just talking to things. Funny meeting you here. Any plans for Christmas? Yeah. For exposition in, uh, yeah, purposes. Right, you know? right, right. Like, I need to tell the audience that I'm single but looking for love, so I'm going to talk to this glass heart. Guess we're just a bunch of lonely hearts. Or this tape of Holiday Heart. Oh my god. Oh my god. But judging from the temperature drop at my entrance, baby, you did right by keeping me in the corner crack of your closet. She's like waiting around for Chris Massey to show up and she's... I'm sorry. And she's like talking to the ornaments and she's like, any plans for Christmas? Guess we're just a couple of lonely hearts. Like, it was like oh, pure nonsense. Oh, no. Just hanging around. No, she literally made that joke, Andrew. You're not the only ones hanging around. Of course she did. Of course. We're just hanging around waiting for Chris Massey to show up. Anyway, so he shows up with his tow truck to, I don't know, she had a flat tire or something fucking happened. <laughs> and he's like, go sit in my truck and have some hot chocolate and it'll be great. And like his car is all Christmassy and you're like, what the fuck is this? So then... She's literally like, ooh, marshmallows. Oh my bloop, god. Bloop. Uh, of course. Of course. There was a lot of objectification of Jason Priestley, and I appreciated it. Oh, okay. At some point, I thought, is he hot Santa? I got in a little car trouble, but um, things are looking good. Got some help from a gorgeous tow truck driver. Ah, he's got your motor roaring. I think he's finishing up. Like, is oh. he, like, hot Santa? Yeah. And then she's going to, like, become... Because he's Chris Massey. Everything looks very Chris Massey. <laughs> right, and he's she's going to be Miss Claus by mm -hmm. the end, but, mm -hmm. like, they're hot or mm -hmm. something. Right. Or whatever. It didn't happen. But a lot of stuff is revealed about what is going on with him. Oh, my. Everyone's acting odd. Okay. Ah, uh, true love. I remember the first time I saw your mother. Ed Bakley Jr. gives a whole speech about true love. I also saw a galaxy of possibilities before me. It was an outdoor concert under the stars for music camp. I was first violin, looked over and saw the brightest star of all, your mother. Everyone's just a little weird. She was the first oboe. I was the only oboe. You were the only oboe for me. It was true love. Like there's just stuff that's happening where she's like, I'm gonna get my PJs at my parents' house. Like there's just some like, I don't know. Right, just it was feels... written for a 23 year old, not a 43 year old. It just feels a little strange, that's all. But it was a little meta. Like there was a couple of times where she's like, oh no, I fell into your arms, oh no. Oh, I found it. Oh. <sighs> at some point they're singing Christmas carols is 100% not his voice. Great. Up on the housetop, reindeer paws, down jumps good old Santa Claus. Because they're in like a diner and the acoustics are like an oh. intimate studio recording. And he's like on a guitar. Okay. <laughs> and it's just so completely not the acoustics of the room that it's madness. Ho, 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 who would it go? Ho, ho, ho. They didn't add in. They needed <laughs> to like no pump in the like diner din. Nothing. I mean, it was an empty diner, but like the caca. It was just okay. like so strangely like and now a pre-recorded track where like, <laughs> it's very strange so we don't know what his deal is and he keeps right. being like oh i travel all the time and i was like santa is he santa he's fucking like, this is where this is leading it's not um and the sister is increasingly getting more and more pregnant and her husband keeps getting delayed at the airport and he's like not there and she's like gonna what is it her husband <laughs> no 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 oh, okay. what chris massey yeah. no 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 <laughs> I mean, that would be a fucking wacky. Well, ho, ho, ho. What is this? We got a tree. Uh, you got more than a tree. So that's going on. At some point, they throw a huge party, but clearly had no money for extras. And so they just have a montage of close ups of her and Jason Priestley making cocktails. Oh my and God. And then cut to they're out by the fireplace. Wow, what a great party. <laughs> Nice to get out of that kitchen now that drinks are served. Perfect time to get away for s'mores. 
We don't see a one person at this party. It was so funny. <laughs> wow, it's exhausting having a big old party. Yeah, it sure is. It's exhausting mm -hmm. pouring those drinks into those cups. It's always fun to get away from camp, even for an hour. <laughs> It was like, and they were making like weird, like five different weird drinks. And I was like, one of them was like green. I was like, what's oh, going on? Oh, because oh, it's Christmas. It was just weird. It was like, ah. Um, the so Christmas that was really, special. The Christmas, oh no. Christmas is special. <laughs> there was a lot of like, and he's getting unhammered. Do they acknowledge that his name is Christmassy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he's like, I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> and then he's like, I really like Christmas because, oh, also, so it is revealed throughout the film okay. that he is a tow truck driving, Christmas decorating, volunteer firefighter, glass blowing handyman. Wow. Those are all of the jobs that he has over the course of this 85 minute movie. Sounds like he knows his way around a glory hole. <laughs> what is a glory hole? <laughs> point guess who was making all those glass hearts it was chris massey oh my god the ones that she had that she was talking to yeah. wow. they're all over town they just kept showing up oh my god. i don't even know oh. then it became a whole thing it was about his heart and it was, she was talking to his heart she was talking to his hearts chris massey's hearts funny meeting you here any plans for christmas there was a whole glory hole scene and he's blowing hearts and teaching her how to do it and it was nice. really out of nowhere because we had previously, I was like, he's a truck right, driver. Right, because he's a truck driver. He helps them decorate their house. Sure. He's a volunteer firefighter. There's a, he's well, a man of many talents. There's a firefighter men's ball uh -huh. that she can't go to because her sister goes into labor. Oh, my God. And then, of course, she gets there after everyone has left and is like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry I missed the ball. Let's dance just by ourselves because we didn't have time to pay for extras. There was a really good of course oh, of in this course. one. Of course, but of course. Of course. Of course. Mm. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, so anyway, they fall in love. Of course. Uh, and um, she's given her last big holiday love podcast oh. about true love. Because oh, she stops the podcast now that she's found. No, love? but she kept oh. uh, having inspiration. He had writer's block for the. Oh. And she was gonna. She kept being like, "I'll do it later." And I was like, oh, "It's getting pretty close to Christmas, girl." Um, How many of these episodes did she put out? This was the Christmas one. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure Melissa Joan Hart knows what a podcast is, so I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Wow. I'm sorry. Read. She was like at her house, just like with a mic. Like, oh. here's my so Christmas. So the producer maybe doesn't know. Okay, maybe the producer doesn't know what a podcast is. But, Spoiler um, alert, she produced it. Oh my God. Probably. Actually, I think she did. Yeah, she's she directs some of them now too. We'll talk about it in just one short second. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, they you know fall in love and um, they're gonna have massy babies and... Um, <laughs> Gross. Christmas, Christmas masquerade babies. Um, no, no, no. The Chris masquerade ball is breaking the internet. Now, if Chris Massey throw uh -huh. a Chris masquerade ball, yeah. that's okay. Welcome, Chris masqueraders! That I can uh, But would it be a, more like a Chris massacre? Oh no! Anyway, so she's giving her holiday Christmas podcast lots of talk about true love. Oh. What you got here, that's worth living for. True love. They get together. It was weird at the end, he like pulls out a ring. Oh. Don't worry, it's not an engagement ring. It's just to show you how I feel about you and to let you know I think we have a future together. I mean, I guess I appreciate that, but like, why are we giving a ring? Make her some earrings. Make her some glass baubles. You yeah. know how to do it. Some heart earrings. Cute. You know? Heart, show heart, my love. My true necklace. love for you. A necklace. A lovely little pendant. Why not? It was just so like, and here's, it's not an engagement ring. No, <laughs> put it on the other finger. Don't worry. It's not an engagement ring. And it was this huge fucking sapphire. Oh. So I was like, blah, 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 blah. it was weird. That is weird. So anyway, that was Dear Christmas. There was a couple of highlights. Uh, Chris like Massey. Chris Massey. Wow. But speaking of Melissa Joan Hart. Oh, yeah. I also watched Santa Boot Camp, which was oh. directed by Melissa Joan Hart. Wow. 
That came out this year? This year. Because I think I saw a thing for it, like a, yeah. and I was like, oh, they like send some, they, they, there's like. The plot is a nonsense, okay. but Rita Moreno is in it. So oh. I said, I will be watching it. Great. Melissa Joan Hart, executive produced and directed, Santa Boot Camp. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, great. Party Planner. Sure. Not for a Chris Masquerade Ball. A Chris Masquerade Ball. <laughs> but a Christmas ball nonetheless. Uh, has to has a difficult client who wants the best Santa at his party. He okay. needs the best one. Okay. None of these mall Santas. He needs the best Santa. So she's on, he already oh, fired his last. So she makes a Santa boot camp. Oh to no! Make, get oh, ready. Okay. So, he, so, so he already fired his last party planner for because he couldn't find the best Santa. So she's got to... Because she needs this job because... She needs this job because she's a small PR firm. So she finds a flyer, of course, like, because flyers. You know, like... Like who is Paper printing, flyers, but yeah. Rita Moreno is because she runs Santa Boot Camp every year, which you would think would be, like, in July or something. But sure. no, it's, like, two weeks before Christmas. I mean, I guess, you know, how much does it really take? You know, whatever. You're not thinking about it that far in advance. And so she runs Santa Boot Camp. Um, where they teach you how to be the best Santa. Actually, I think that makes a lot of sense, okay. right? It's like, oh shit, it's December. I'm a little short on cash. I need something. I would say you should be doing it in October, November, let's say. November. Just like right before. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be in class when you should be in the Santa outfit. Exactly. Yeah. If you are not out of boot camp by Thanksgiving, you have a problem. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, she runs Santa boot camp with an iron fist. Of course. And, um, oh my God, this was another weird thing. The love interest okay. is a hot chef. Wait, is she in it? Does she star in it? No, she's not in it okay, at all. Great. She's not trying to play young ingenue, um, party planning extraordinaire. No, hot chef who's chefing for the Santa boot camp because uh -huh. Rita Moreno is, you know, machinating love. Okay. And um, it's, I was like, oh, who's this guy? He's hot. Looked him up. The fucking psycho boyfriend from Until We Meet Again. Until I see you again, ghost fucking, ghost piano. Oh, the psycho boyfriend. I love you, Lisa. Psycho boyfriend. This is the perfect example of hot with the right hair. Ooh. It was swooped back. Okay. I feel like your reaction isn't big enough. He was in ghost piano, Andrew. <laughs> he showed up in this movie and he was in ghost piano. Fair. I mean, I mean I'm not going to lie. That kind of just tracks to me. Sure. I was just like... <laughs> What's happening? Like all these so niche, specifically sure. movies that no one has heard of or is talking about at all. And these people are in them. Well, yes. Man Eater Girl. Of course. Of course. But like they Ghost came, Piano Guy. All of these random niche made for TV movie <clears throat> actors showed up in these made for TV movies for Christmas. I mean, that doesn't shock me. Anyway, he's the love interest. And um, uh, Melissa Jared Whitaker, uh, you know, from um, What We Do in the Shadows curly haired friend she was in hairspray she shows up she was in the nutty christmas movie they must be friends she was the you know friend yeah. so she's rita moreno's like right hand elf okay. um wow. hi i'm here so rita moreno is like clearly some sort of magical is she santa perhaps she she may be married to santa oh my god but you're like is she an elf is she like you're like something's going on yeah she's in these fabulous track suits her outfits get increasingly more fabulous love it there's glitter there's turbans she's driving a golf cart she's fabulous like Great. it's rita moreno like you're just like this is what i came for yep transformation thank Great. you for giving me all the rita moreno i needed love this it. is fabulous love it um so they're teaching them how to be santa's village workers because like it's kind of weird because there's like women in the Boot camp, because she makes the, the party planner go to the boot camp. She's like, oh. you have to come to the boot camp to fall in love with this chef. Right. <clears throat> I'm not going to just give you a, my best Santa's Right, you name. have to come to the boot camp so that come. you know what it takes to be Santa Because we're going to melt your cold Santa-less heart uh. um, because you like to work too much. Oh, but it was nice. So her mom in the movie is um, deaf, and they had a lot of like just scenes of them signing with each other and and it was just subtitled, subtitled. like they didn't do the whole like voiceover thing which That's is annoying nice. <laughs> it was a little bit like and you're over here in these scenes without anyone else a little bit but it was nice the representation was there sure and that and the actress i've seen her and stuff she was great and i don't think i've really ever seen any of that in these no. christmas movies so it was a so nice sort nice. of like oh that's 
cool. So they all get, you know, makeovers at some point. They're all doing each other's... Santa makeup makeovers or like just Christmas makeovers? Village? I don't know exactly. Okay. But so she, she <laughs> Rita Moreno does her, she puts like red lipstick on the main girl and she turns and looks in the mirror and goes, wow, I don't look like myself at all. And she looks exactly the same. Wow, I don't even look like myself. <laughs> Except she has a darker <laughs> shade of lipstick on. Like it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> It was no hello Mary Lou when when she puts oh. when she puts her hair up and puts where you're like oh you're a different person it was not that okay. it was just you look exactly the same what has happened like you didn't even change your hairstyle what's going on she's putting old Santa makeup on him we got oh because she's like you're distractingly handsome we you're, have oh, to tone this down oh this my. is way too much he is distractingly handsome we have to tone it down okay sorry distractingly. I'm not distracted. Oh. So she does like old man makeup on him so he can be Santa. <laughs> because Rita Moreno's real sassy bitch. Of course. Of course. And so she's like, you're not ready to be Mrs. Claus. You have to be an elf. Emily, look what I picked out for you. <laughs> really? Oh, well, the ears may be redundant. It's your call, sweetie. <gasps> I was like, Rita. But like, that was funny. <laughs> So then, of course, of course, they have a scene where he's going to teach her how to cook. And he's like, have you ever whisked before? And I was like, get what? the fuck out of here. <laughs> Leave right now. Have you ever whisked before? Uh, no. <laughs> you need a whisk. OK. Right. Jingle bells, jingle. And she's like, no. How do you whisk? I was like, girl, have you stirred something? What's happening? What the fuck is going yes, on? Yes, although I will I say. I know it's a slight art to whisking, but I was like, what are we doing? The what are key we doing? is to just go in a straight line, back and forth. Not to like try and, mm -hmm. no circles. They say it's actually more efficient to just. Well, he taught her how to whisk. Like this. <laughs> Do I sing while I? Yeah. Okay. Jingle bells. It really Jingle helps. Jingle all the way. Right, I'll bounce while I do it. Yeah. So then there's like this older guy who's married to Rita Moreno and you're like, so he's Santa Claus. And then it turns out, yes, he's Santa Claus. But I was like, who is that actor? Okay. That is somebody that I watched and it was like a real specific thing. Turns out it's John Shuck, who you don't know, but is one of the FBI agents from Outrageous Fortune. Like the, the kind of um, almost Herman Munster looking guy. Yes. It was the same guy. And I was like, that's the same face. Oh my God. And then it clicks and you're like, oh my God, of course. Oh my God, of course. Of course, Outrageous Fortune. It always comes back to Outrageous Fortune. <laughs> Love it. Oh, he also teaches her how to knead dough and does a terrible job. I'm gonna knead it into a disc, fold it, turn it, start again. Not accurate. He wasn't building up the gluten. Okay, great. Supple but firm. When you start to feel a gentle give, you're getting close. It was not working. Maybe it was gluten-free dough. I wouldn't put it past him. At some point, they go to a Christmas tree auction. What? Six feet tall, fresh as the day is long. Do I have a bit of Now that's a good one. Think? I got 50. Do I got 55? Now you might be thinking, oh, are they decorated in a certain way that sure. might make them? OK, like artistic <laughs> auction. They uh, are not. They uh, are Christmas trees. Going, going, gone. God, that happened so fast. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. <laughs> There's like a small crowd of people who are bidding on Christmas trees. Can I get trees. $50, $50, 60 Someone pays $80. Do I have 80 80 I have 80 Sold! No. <laughs> he calls the bids, Aiden. Sorry. And he was like, that's the one. That's the one. I gotta get that one. I mean, I kind of like that, where it's like you get to see it in all of its glory. Although that's really just kind of what you do when right? you, you go to a Christmas tree lot. That's the whole point. Weird. I do like the so idea of like an artistic Christmas oh, tree. Oh, this one was decorated by so or, and so. Right, or... this one is like, it's not maybe like a full ass Christmas tree, but right, like right. an artistic, like, oh, and the, it's an auction of Christmassy things that then it goes sure. to charity for the glass school or whatever. It was you know? just outside at a Christmas tree lot that they were auctioning them off. Going, going, gone. God, that happened so fast. So really weird thing. Okay. And I wouldn't have noticed, obviously, if I had not just watched Dear Christmas, Melissa Jared Whitaker is wearing the same exact ugly Christmas sweater that Melissa Joan Hart wore in Dear Christmas. And I really thought 
that I was Do going insane. Do we think that she owns like a Christmas clothing company? And she's a just line. Like, yes. Certainly a line. Yeah. It was so ugly. It's like puke neon green. Ugh. And they were, it was the same, it was the same sweater. So did she steal the sweater from the set of Dear Christmas and then was like, you know what, it'll be great. This ugly sweater. I'm going to put it on. What a weird. It happened. I don't know. Wow. So the stars were aligning this year. <laughs> yeah. I really didn't know. So anyway, of course, the whole time you're like, well, she's clearly going to give um, her the name of her husband because he's real Santa. And he'll oh, be right. The Santa at now the she's... Not Christmas Parade Ball. And so it's a big to do and let's make a big party and whatever. And and so, the, of course, the whole because there's like a final. Could they hire extras? Yes, they hired extras. They could afford it. And they are graduating. Okay. And they have their Santa boot camp graduation at the party. It was weird. Oh, that doesn't make sense. And they have a final project. And she convinces them. I don't know if she's paying them. Convinces all of the class to, like, basically give free labor at this party, essentially. Like, I was like, I mean, it's all very, let's do this project together. But it's helping me financially. It was strange. That is strange. (laughs) So they're all at the party. And they're all celebrating when Rita Moreno has a fabulous sort of like Arctic Mrs. Ooh. Claus, like fabulosity. Yes. yes. And they, t- you know, he's Santa Claus and it's great. And then the kiss was disappointing. Oh. It was like, eh. Uh-uh. And then in a wacky turn of events, um, Rita Moreno's like, okay, bye. We're going to go. We made everyone's Christmas's wishes comes true. And they get into a blue catalog and it flies away grease style into the um, sky. And they're like, bye. It came out of nowhere. I love that. It was wacky, wacky, wacky. Wow. Okay, bye. And like, it's like a wide shot of this huge party with civilians, for lack of a better, and no one cares. No one's like, oh my God, look, there's a fucking flying right. Cadillac with Santa, with Santa and, and his Mrs. wife. Claus. Like, only she and here, like, oh, bye. Maybe because it's magic. Oh, maybe. They're like having delusions like Dolly Parton. Yes, exactly. And she was never really there. Woo. That was Santa Boot Camp. I mean, that sounds pretty wacky. It was pretty wacky. Well, a little wacky. It was a little wacky. Yeah, yeah. On the verge of wacky. That When that Christmas sweater showed up, I mean, I really... That is that is crazy. Really lost it. What? Like... Yeah. What's the story? Yeah. If I could ask Melissa Joan Hart one thing, <laughs> it would be about that Christmas sweater. <laughs> I love that. I don't know. Great. Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho! Oh my God. Okay, so I think it's time. We have to talk about The Last Train to Christmas. Oh my God. From 2020. No. Yes. 2021. Stop it. This movie came out last year? The Last Train to Christmas from 2021. A Sky original. So I watched this movie because Michael Sheen. Yep. And... I would say it's worth it for Michael Sheen. This movie was insane, insane. and I sort of loved it. I hated it and I loved every minute of that hatred. Last Train to Christmas, basic premise. Yep. Uh, Michael Sheen is on a magical Christmas train that yep. when he goes forward a car, he goes into the future. Yep. And if he goes backwards a car, he goes into the past. Yes. And it reverberates. So the further back he goes, if he changes anything, then he goes forward, stuff has changed, vice versa, vice versa. Seems like an absolute nightmare, by the way. Yes. It, it's a real quandary. Yeah, like, you have to be... But he, yeah. he navigates it. There was a lot of... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There were so many things. All I want to talk about is the wigs. <laughs> oh, yeah. But there's so much more to talk about. Not really. But the fucking wigs. Every time I thought, <laughs> surely not. There can't be a worse... Wit. Like, it starts strong, right? You're like, he's in a bleach blonde stringy mullet. Yep. That looks 80s. horrible. Awful. And you're like, cl- clearly this is the worst wig I've ever seen in my life, and it can't get it. <laughs> right, it they're going to go, oh, worse. they're going to the future? They're going to the past? I know you don't believe me. It gets worse. Yep. Michael Sheen and his girlfriend, Natalie Emmanuel, yeah. who is the star of The Invitation. Oh, wow. I think she's great, and I'm kind of obsessed with her, by cool. the way. great. If you haven't seen The Invitation... 
It's exactly the movie we love, by okay, the way. Right. Like, okay. you should watch it, and we might have to review it. The plans to watch, I just haven't. It's, it's you know. so dumb okay. in the best way. Great. And it's it just exactly where you're like, I hope this happens. It does. <laughs> oh, I hope this dumb thing happens. It does. Great. But she really holds it together. She's great. Okay. Um, so anyway, she shows up um, in this. They yeah. are engaged. They're going to meet his family for the first time. And he's feeling I, in emotions. She's really in her emotions about it. Remember? She was like, like, will you just pay attention to me? Because I'm freaking out here. Because she's meeting them for the first time. And sure. she's all nervous about it. Um, at this point, I was still in the depths of this bleached wand, like, mullet. I can't explain how terrible it is. It's <laughs> awful. so atrocious. I mean, it was like, I can't look away. Right, right. So he's there. His brother is going to be on the train with his wife. Yeah. His brother, played by Carrie Elwes. No. What? You didn't know? The entire time? Everything all right? Roger's somewhere behind this. Sorry. It was that wig. It was that wig. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse, Carrie Elwes shows up in this carrot top, big red. Yeah. Like what? Brian May wig. It is. Wasn't he in that Brooke Shields movie? Yeah. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Mind blown. Yes. Very so much so. Okay. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that's Carrie Always. Oh my God. Okay. And his wig. Right. It was so insane. So insane. And then with the glasses too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're having like a sibling rivalry. They're brothers. Right. Michael Sheen owns a club and is opening more clubs. Club promoter. Club promoter slash Music- musician, musician person. It was very confusing. Well, he didn't know what he was doing with his life. I guess, but it was confusing to me as to what they even said he was doing. I don't think he knew. No, but there was a thing. It was like a, there was something. His plan was flawed. I guess. <laughs> but he was famous. Like when we meet him. Was like, he? He was famous enough that famous. people knew him. I think he was like regionally famous. Okay. Do you like clubbing? What? Any weeknight, weeknight, bring this card, tell them Tony Taz sent you. So we set up the dynamic between them, their wigs are all I saw, it was two wigs talking to each other. Six clubs is a bit crazy. I said if he begged me. How much you borrowing? It was going to be eight clubs. Michael Sheen goes forward a car. To find the champagne. He's got to get the champagne for the engagement. Yep. I'm Tony Towers. Good for you. And where's your ticket? I'm famous. Are oh, you now? And suddenly it's... <laughs> The future. Well, but well, yes. It, like we know it's the future. Mm. We see he's older. He's yes. like much more overweight. He's like pretty sloppy. Is he's almost like he's homeless. Hom- I think this is the one where or, he's like, homeless. He looks like you know clearly unkempt and whatever. Yes. And these girls are like, oh my god, and they're laughing at him. Oh we right, and he's like a CD player. What's that? Right. A Game Boy. What? Yeah. And um, you know what you're future could hold right, right. well and, then he comes back and he's the like car. oh my god that was crazy like, that was really weird and he comes back and the wig comes back right was that what it was i thought he came back and then he went back again i don't there's remember there's a lot of back and forth a lot lots of back and forth yeah so then he changes a little bit of something in the past yep and goes forward again yep this time it's very 90s oh because yeah because he was like oh He's right. I do fail. Six was too many. Six was too many So he clubs. goes back, he crosses out Just six one. on the flyer and says, one club. And, and he's, he's like, let's see if that does it. rich and successful. He's got a fancy suit on. And this is when he meets his aunt. Yes. And they have a very intriguing conversation. Yes, about, oh, you gave me a pineapple and you gave him a guitar. I was always convinced that you got him better presents than me. <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing in it. I, I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, you got me a pineapple. <laughs> it's alluded that she might care a little bit more yeah. for. I'm not gonna lie, this hit really oddly home with me. Okay. Because um. Did you also receive a pineapple for Christmas? No, but my aunt. It was a similar yeah. situation. I remember to this day, my aunt sent my sister a marble chess set that was beautiful, <laughs> and she sent. Did me- your sister like marble? My sister chess? like chess. Chess? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Go yeah. Continue, yeah. yes. And she sent me a um, foam pig that had wings that slotted in and you could throw it. When pigs fly, I don't know if it was supposed to mean something or what, but that was the, yeah. If a target game is really for you, yeah. your target uh, demographic. I don't know about that. Wow. Yeah. You see, the, this, 
movie, as weird as it was, I felt had some real truisms or whatever. I felt some feels during this movie. I don't know. What can I say? Michael Sheen's fucking great. Sure. So, yes, we get the sense that the aunt cares a little bit more about Carrie always. We're not sure why. Yeah. Then he goes back again. Right. Because Carrie always has died, I think, in that future. There's all these sliding doors of it all. Yeah. He, he dies or something or whatever, so he has to go back and try to save him, so he tries to do it again. He right. tries to save him again. And he goes back... Farther. Further. And farther. And, farther. and, and, and in this um, scenario, Carrie always has stolen Anne Margaret's wig. <laughs> it's feathered. <laughs> he has a mustache. It's wacky. Yep. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was so much. Yep. And so he progresses. He's, you know, it's, it is it is sort of one of those, like, what is that? Like, the trolley car is coming, and do you save the person? The trolley problem? The trolley problem. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. It was one of those. Like, it was kind of a, a little, bit. little bit of an interesting idea, and I thought that they were juggling a lot of things. But yes. I was never, like, horribly confused, and I thought that they did a good job of, like, sliding doors of it all where it's like this affected that that yeah. affected this yeah i don't know i kind of dug it i it was you know it was um very melodramatic oh sure it was a play yeah that, that you know yeah. was made into a movie the wigs were terrible oh my god we haven't even talked about all of them no um oh boy a lot of it did start to get a little confusing mm. but overall and like it got overwrought like the filmmaking was just so overwrought particularly it starts to go not just in terms of the style of the car changes, right? Oh, this is See, now I that was the fun. 50s, right? That was cute, and right? The outf- the oh, costumes- now we're in the 90s and the costumes are different. Okay, great, what, fun. What would have changed? But then it starts to get like the, the cinematography, like the, the film, well, like, like they kept the, going from 4x3 and then 69 And then, you know, it gets real Hitchcocky. Like it was just like, at one point, if he had said Rosebud, I wouldn't have been surprised. Of course. Of course. It was like, well, you don't need the filmmaking to change I, as much. Uh, I, it it were, got convoluted. They were shooting for the stars. Yes. I think they mostly succeeded. Very ambitious. For what it is. Very ambitious. And I appreciate and that. They, they succeeded mostly. Again, the wigs oh were <laughs> madness. So he goes back. To his first wife, he you know yes. they're divorced, and he well this was like a so open, weird with the game open and ended the... the game, and they're just really mean to him. Yeah. Dad, don't ruin it. We don't want to play. Dad, please. Tony, you're gonna make him cry. Can you please just move? Okay, okay, okay. Dad, you're doing it wrong. Jesus Christ, Tony, what is the matter with uh, you? He goes back and and undoes his child and does not care. It is not a mentioned. He's no. just like, oh, I shouldn't have married her. Yeah. This is bad. And he yeah. goes back and rejects the wife. He goes back again. Right. And, oh, because at this point, he tried to go forward because he's lost Natalie Manuel. Right. The girl he's fiancé to. Which, the and they'd already set up, which I thought was good, that they aren't really going to work. Right. They're in love, but like... Right, because he first goes and they she, they're things. divorced or something. It was like, oh, she's left you or she's going to leave you or she, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was something like that. And so he's like, oh, because she left me because I was failure at business because right, but then I, it, I have to go fix it and do it one part It turns out they're just it. not made for each other and they want different things out of life. Was that the case? She was like, I want to have 20 kids and live in the country and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and he was right. like, eee. Yeah, that's right. Are we going to have a family? We're, we're going to what? Oh, well, not right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so she disappears and he has to mourn that relationship. Yeah. And then he, you know, goes back further and then keeps sliding back and forth. In one scenario, they turn into, I don't know, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Right. They're a band now, and Carrie always is in another hilarious permed red. <laughs> so awful. Like fucking. And the raccoon that is on top of Michael <laughs> Sheen's head that looks like he trimmed it himself, that's like crooked and like, I don't even know. <laughs> You really want to open that can of worms, too? Is that the one where he pisses on him? Yeah. That was so weird, though, too. So, Carrie always gets angry and he's drunk and whatever, right? There's a whole problem of him, like, alcohol and, and depression and drinking and whatever. Right. And he starts to just, like, piss all over Michael Sheen and this reporter or something. He's like a basket case. Yeah, like, yeah. right. But then, so, then they're all standing outside of the car in the, like, hallway. Right. And they're treating it like it was, like, a toxic waste. They're like, you can't go oh, in there. It he... smells so bad. You ready? Go! 
Go, 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 go! Right, and it was just piss. I was just like, I mean, like, like it's I get it, great. it's not pleasant, but like, you guys. That's right, that was intense. It was, it was weird. Yeah, oh, because he's gone back even further. Yes. And oh, he's right. uncovering the mysteries. Of Karen Walker. That the his, aunt. turns out his brother, Carrie Always, is actually his cousin. Yes. And the aunt, who he had previously met in the future, yep. was his mom. Yep. She couldn't handle it, gave the she son up. She was convinced up. by Michael Sheen's mother to give, it, to, to yeah. let her raise it instead. Let her raise the son him. as hers because she couldn't handle it, blah, blah, blah. So in this timeline, Carrie always knows this. And right. is so distraught that he found out late in life that his mom gave him up. Yes. And that's why he's like has this downward he, spiral. Yes. Like once he's unlocked that, because he gets all angry and he's like, well, you aren't even related or whatever. He yeah, like yeah, figures yeah, yeah, it yeah. out and tells him as a young child. Yes. And then. Oh, because when they go back to the 50s, he's suddenly Stewie Gluck from Freak. The kid that played young Michael Sheen was. Was good. Yeah. I was like, oh no, they're not going to. Right. They're, they're not, not going to try. The age. No, they, thank God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank God. How's she going to get home? Thank God. So then he's going forward um, to try and save and he keeps him. He's kind keeps of trying going to back and him. forth after this first right. like childhood thing, and every iteration he's upset because he realizes that he was given up by his mom and that they're not yes. actually brothers, and there's this resentment, whatever, and then finally he goes all the way back. All the way back. Oh no, we're not there yet. Okay. We're not quite there yeah. yet. Because there's that great scene where he gets to meet Natalie Emanuel again. They're having a flirt, right? It's as if they've just met, but he yeah. knows that they have a, a timeline where they were engaged. Right. And they have a like a little chatty flirt or whatever. He's a little more famous in this one. Yes, he's a little more famous. He's got time. that like awful bubblegum pink suit on. Yes, yes. Um, and he's like the host of some show or whatever it right, was. Right, Top something of the Pops or something like that. he didn't think like he was going to be doing, but he was, yeah. And he, you know, like realizes in this moment, oh, we're not meant for each other. She has a different path yep. and I can like gr I've, I've grieved this and I'm letting it go yeah. and that's okay we didn't talk about when he hits on his daughter well that was interesting too that was really real I yeah. thought so he goes forward he's in little tiny shorts <laughs> I think his shorts are too tight <laughs> I'm just uh, wondering if Tony's shorts are a bit short <sighs> he's such a scoundrel right yeah. and yeah. so he's like oh who's this hot young thing boing it's your daughter and it was just like a, ah, like a, a real teaching moment yep, for him. Yep, yep, yep. Waggy, waggy, waggy. <laughs> what? I love you, Dad. Whoa. But then we go to the future and, and, and he's in the Matrix. I don't even know. With the long ponytail, it's a different mullet. Yes. This time it's dark and it's like a flat top, but then a ponytail. <laughs> And Carrie always is in another, you know, that's just like the bandana moment when he has like the Oh, the, the like Willie Nelson. Like, His Willie yes. Nelson period. Oh my God. So that was wacky. Yeah. But then the wackiest of all, when he goes to the future and he had terrible plastic surgery and he has hilarious <gasps> villain eyebrows drawn on. <laughs> and he looks like President Snow from Hunger Games. And I don't even know. I don't even know. It really was. It was... Again, like every time I was like, well, surely this, this has got to be the worst. Like, dead pelt on his head is going to be the. <laughs> no. <laughs> Literal villain eyebrows. I didn't know. I don't know why. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> on some level, he was like from Whoville. Like, he was a villain from a Whoville. Bit, like, oh I God. don't even yes. know. It was, it, it was kind it of Whoville y. Madness. Yeah. And then Haley Mills shows up as Grandmama. Haley Mills. From like the original Parent Trap and all the Disney movies. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, Pollyanna. And as grandma. She shows up as the mom. Oh, briefly, and it's, right. And it's, and um, it's Carrie Always's funeral has just happened or something. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. right. That's right. They're on the train, and he's like, "Oh, but oh God, Grandpa died," and she's like, "What are you talking about? He's right over there." Yeah, like, it's yeah. like, no, it was. I don't remember his name. Harry. Anyway. Yeah, it was whatever. Um, the Seagull song. Can we talk about that? <laughs> Terrible song. Awful. Break in the clouds. See good. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, should we make that eagles? Like, eagles of love. Eagles of love. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And here's a song that might help you cope with some of those feelings, okay? It's called Lesbian Seagull. I was just kind of waiting for him to wake up and be like in a hospital bed. Ah, you know? Right. 
I did love the ending and I did cry. Oh. I had the feels. Oh. I don't know. I kept being like, what is this? Oh my God, what? I'm kind of, wait, now Michael Sheen is carrying this whole thing. And I'm well, upset. he can, he, he, he really like, gives them enough emotion. He keeps you in it. Yeah. And then the crazy wigs kept showing up. So I was like. <laughs> can't, can't wait to keep seeing more wigs. Like, I, again, I just could not fathom that they would just keep getting worse. And yeah. they just did. But he has to go oh. all the way back. And then it becomes, I don't know, like a German expression is Schindler's List Hitchcock movie. It was definitely point. Hitchcockian like slash. It's suddenly like, it's black and white. Yep. They're on a train. Yep. He's really little. Yes. And Carrie always is a bebe. Where is Bebe's chamber? I don't even think he can talk. No, he's like four or something. Because he draws, he can write though. He does write it. I, I don't know. Maybe he's a shy child. Maybe. Maybe they couldn't get the actor to say the lines. I couldn't talk till I was six, which is like 42 in your years. The aunt is still has him at this point. Right, but it was the, like the handoff was and about to happen. And this weird like... Um, man who knew too much spy plot that was like the, remember they were like talking about like the bomb and the train and if we're gonna remember that's why he jumps off the train to stop the bomb but he just gives me the brush off and says hop it before this thing blows I mean really are you really trying to tell me there's an unexploded bomb under the crease like it got crazy at some point I remember that the train there's like and... there's like people in the same car talking around him and he ends up stopping a bomb. <laughs> that what happened? It was so crazy. I remember the train stopping and him going out. So of he the jumps. Car. So he opened. There's for some reason there's a door in the train car. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Like next to benches. I'm not sure. He opens it. Right. And jumps, jumps out. out to stop. The aunt from giving the baby. Yes. And so the mom like is like, oh my god, my baby, I have to get my baby. Yeah. And so they stop the train. Right. So that the bomb that was gonna explode, a, something he like runs into a town. Remember, it was like crazy, and he and the bomb doesn't kill anyone because it, he tells them about or something. It was crazy. Yeah, but where did the bomb have come? Like, if he hadn't changed it, where what? Who? What happened? Who died with that bomb explosion? I don't know. You're silly boy, why did you do that? Don't ever do anything like that again. I didn't know. At this point, it was becoming experimental. Yes. I was like, I'm not quite sure what's happening. No. I, I remember know. him jumping. I mean, I thought he was just like, oh, I'm just going to jump out and end it all. And I shouldn't have been here in that way. Then the brother, I don't know. It was a weird thing. Yes. But instead, no, they, they stopped the train to get him. He's alive, but he goes to the hospital or something? I don't know, but the mom, Carrie always his mom, decides she's got to keep him. She's got to keep it. Well, because he wrote he writes something. A note Did she ever that read says, it? like, you can do it. Yeah, or don't be afraid. Something. something weird. So then, you know, he's fixed, you know, as much as he can. He's fixed what he thinks he can fix. Yep. He's gone all the way forward to the twilight of his, you know, life. Yeah. And he finally gets off the train. Right. And the look he gives. And he's at the train station. He hears, there's a piano. I don't know why it's outside. Yeah. And he hears the little lyrics from their Seagull, Seagull song. song. And we don't even see who it is, but we know that it's Carrie always probably in a hilarious wig, but we don't get to see it. <laughs> and the look that he gives of just pure, like, this was my life. We made it. I did it. Yeah. And you're still here, brother. I was like, yeah. Yes, Michael Sheen. Yes. <laughs> you nailed it. You didn't overplay it. You nailed it. I was into it. Okay. I was sort of into it. I think I actually wrote down, fuck you, and so <laughs> I guess we were in different places. Um, well, I don't know, but I was um, mesmerized and got into it. It was such a high concept. It was really it high It could concept. have been so... So bad. And it was, like, interesting. It was interesting. I was not bored. I was like, what is this? There was wigs. <sighs> I, it certainly, it was interesting. I did get bored, but it mostly kept it moving then whenever you did get bored. You know, it was like, it was, okay, You know, always something new to look yes. at. Yes. Oh, look, they changed a new wig. whatever. A new a wig. New, a new car, a new this, a new story, a new, oh, how's that going to change that? And you were kind of, like, wait. If that, but, but you do, you know, it's it very, was like, very like back to the future -y of like, it oh, was, if you change this now, you're going to start disappearing. Like for what it was, it was a fairly intricate plot yeah. that was handled well. Ish. For what it was. Yes. And Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. He really, if it, he really, if, like, if, if it you, wasn't him, I don't know. I don't know. Because honestly, when Gary always was drunk and it was, it was like a mess. I, was I mean, like, you didn't even know. 
But no, it's him. No, but I was like, this is a mess. This is not working. This is a lot. And it was tedious. It was so much drunken buffoonery. And I was like, this is annoying. That, that scene went on a little long. A little long. But I was so incredibly distracted by the Davy Crockett pelt on top of his head. Right. Wow. That I um, kept me in. Kept me in it. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. That last was train to Christmas. Last train to Christmas. We have wow. good luck with Christmas trains. Yes, we do. That was I was in. I knew. Well, cheers. Yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And um, we'll see you next year, possibly for the dog Dogs. who saved us. Oh my god. Or or ruined our lives. Oh.